Reaper, we keep it rough, we keep it raw, we keep it real. Make sure you subscribe to the Reaper, because I'm doing very good things here at Reaper. Precise. Is he Corey Holcomb's sidekick? Because I see a lot of things going on, and I hear a lot of things going on, you know, uh, on the net that Precise is Corey Holcomb's yes man and sidekick the Reaper Keep It 1000 and so is Marcus this is what I hear you know on the web now they are Corey's sidekicks right you know uh, I always thought that Marcus would take a bullet for Corey the Reaper Keep It 1000 because he just was thirsty to be on the show, and Marcus is still trying to work on being a stand-up comedian, but I don't think he has what it takes, but, you know, hey, you never know. You could get better at something. The Reaper keep it 1,000, and Precise, I guess he's a singer or something, rapper, music guy, or whatever, you know. I think that, uh, I think Precise got a little bit of voice or whatever, but I think he's loud, he's obnoxious, and just nothing comes out of his head, you know, sometimes that's credible, and he over-talks people, you know. Um, is he a talented guy? Uh, used in the right way, he could be. I just don't think on that comedy show uh it fits him the reaper keep it 1000 but i always stuck up for precise because i felt just until recently right that he would tell Corey what was going on and what was on his mind because remember in the charlemagne incident you know um you know precise spoke up and said that Charlemagne was wrong, you know, uh, for coming, you know, at, um, Charlemagne was wrong for putting, uh, Kwame Brown's, you know, business in the street and, you know, mentioning his family. And he deserved everything he got when Corey was trying to cake for Charlemagne because Charlemagne gave him a check. And Precise has spoke up on a bunch of different other issues. He would speak his mind. But I guess since Corey's been taking him on the road and giving him a little bit of exposure and maybe putting a little bit of change in his pocket, Precise, you have started to cake, you know, for this cheeseburger, hamburger, helper, eating ass nigga. The Reaper Keep It 1000. You know, you have started to cake for him, you know, um, just like last week when he was saying he wasn't a coon or a sellout or anything. You didn't have to say nothing. You know, oh, man, I don't worry about what people think, man. What people think. <laughs> All that bullshit. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you could have just stayed quiet. But you have started to cake for Corey and Marcus has been more of the stand up guy I feel you know of late cause Marcus will just say what's on his mind more than you will you know precise so you know like uh you know Nipsey Hussle say don't let the money make you man don't let the money make you you know you make the money don't let the money make you you know, and Precise has started to let the money make him that little piece of change. Because I know it's a little bit, you know, that uh, this uh, Dorito nacho eat nigga is giving you. The Reaper keep it 1,000. Because he always has a bag of chips. This barbecue potato chip eating, sour cream and onion potato chip eating ass nigga. He ain't giving you that much money. The Reaper keep it 1,000. So I know better than that precise you know but the little bit of exposure the little bit of hype the little bit of what you are getting 
is starting to make you a cake-ass nigga. And the Reaper always said you wasn't a cake-ass nigga when people said you was a cake-ass nigga. I said that the show didn't fit you, you know, and you need to keep your damn mouth shut sometime and let somebody say something so you won't be talking over nobody like a pool hall. And even Corey done told you to keep your damn mouth shut, you know, even though uh, somebody should be done bitch slapped him by now with all the shit he talked. But, you know, uh, we want you to be quiet so we can hear the perspective of other people instead of you talking over people. The Reaper keep it 1000, but you, you know, you don't know how to do that. And even Darlene be telling you to do that. You know, uh, Darlene want everybody to be quiet so they can hear that bullshit she talking. You know, and she always like to get into it, an argument with her lover, her ex-lover, Corey. You know, and they go at it left and right. And I made a show up, Darlene, because I said, you know you're still in love with Ice-T. My ex, my ex, my ex, my ex, my ex. My ex. <laughs> but... You know, I don't know what Marcus, what you doing now, Marcus, but, uh, you know, I think you need a job at Home Depot because Corey always talking about me doing being at Home Depot. You need a job at Home Depot because that cheap ass nigga ain't giving you shit. The Reaper keep it 1000 because Corey's got a lot of alimony to pay and he going to be giving up half of that little weak ass paycheck that he get on the road because, you know. His bitch gonna be taking it all and she still gonna have her legs cocked up to somebody else because Corey was a sucker. Oh, goofy ass nigga. Didn't even get a prenuptial agreement and moved his goofy ass from Chi-Town, you know, to LA, to LA without a prenuptial agreement. Like the bitch was gonna stay with you once they got out of LA and you fucking everything that moved. The Reaper keep it 1000, you know. She wasn't gonna stay with you, nigga. You know what I'm saying? She was with you for the paper. But, you know, Corey, my man Corey, thought it was love. You know, I always tell you niggas, you know, hey, don't get with a bitch that's got a baby by somebody else. Because she probably in love with that nigga that she got a baby by and you was the fall guy. And, you know, you're going to find that out later on. Just like uh, Corey did. Did you give him that message, Corey? You're always talking shit about somebody else and somebody else's bitch. Did you give him that lesson that it's not a package deal, Corey? Because you know what? You thought that bitch was sprung on you. She knew you had some potential and talent or whatever, you know, to make a little piece of paper. And then, you know, that's a big thing when you're moving from Chicago to L.A., you know. And you say you in the entertainment business. So she tagged along for a minute. And soon as she put some years in, she noticed she never had no kid by your ass. Because she said, I ain't having no kid by this Captain Crunch eating ass nigga. You know what I'm saying? This true can cereal looking motherfucker. I ain't having no kids by his ass. You know, she said, but I'm going to get the paper. You better be glad she didn't. You know, but I'm going to get the paper. I want my walking papers just like everybody else, you know. That get with a brother in the entertainment business. And this goofy ass nigga Corey didn't even get a prenuptial goodman and thought a bitch like that loved his ass. The Reaper keep it 1000. You and Carl Anthony Towns should hang out. You and Carl Anthony Towns, big pussy cat. Because y'all sure, you always talking about somebody caking for women. You cake for a bitch and bought her all the way from Chicago, her and her, her daughter, and raised her daughter. Like it was yours and everything. And now the bitch won't leave you and she gonna take half of your shit. But you got the nerve enough to talk about the motherfucking Reaper. Get the fuck out of here, Corey. You goofy ass nigga. You know. But this is what go on on the 5150 show. It's precise. A yes man or sidekick? I think so. I didn't think he was at first. Because he speak mostly his mind. But I think so, because precise, you've been up in Corey's ass so far, you can taste his motherfucking breakfast.
Reaper, we keep it rough. We keep it raw. We keep it real. Make sure you subscribe to the Reaper. Because I'm doing good things here at Reaper. Reaper out. Peace.